What's up guys, this is Heiss, and we are back at it with Citation Needed today! So... Why are we getting in a fight? I don't know. I, I, I was just doing a thing. He was pumped up. Yeah, I'm, we, I'm ready, I'm amped, I'm ready to go. We were threatening to go to Alamosa seri seriously earlier, maybe the conductors will see that. Mm. Uh, very fun. So Citation Needed is going to be a railroad story that I'm going to talk the guys through and ask them questions along the way. The correct answers will get a point, and now they will also get a... That may not work, we don't know. But anyway, we'll try it. <laughs> thanks 346, thanks grandma. Right? <laughs> but joining me today, um. you know he dances like this? <laughs> it's Brett Weebold! <laughs> Cam Tell me, strike five moves. Dude, how are you? Oh, oh, my God, right on it. Okay. Um, in the wide, wide world of sports. What is going on here? <laughs> he was my roommate in college very briefly, Leighton Moreland. Can not confirm, he does smell. <laughs> He's wow, gonna do me that wow. dirty. Out, wow. out. Emphasis on dirty. I'm gonna kick the machete away from you. <laughs> <laughs> and together we make three quarters of one idiot, and we're always in search of the fourth piece. And today, for the last episode of the season, it's Dusty's friend Jimmy from the Cog! Whoa. We hope this episode is the peak of your day. That's the there lives. Yep. <laughs> that was a nice gentle life. That was a gentle life. Leighton, well, Leighton has PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> or post, no, P post traumatic. Traumatic Lyme disorder, PTSD. You could misspell citrus. <laughs> you could misspell citrus. Misspell <laughs> citrus. <laughs> <laughs> I like Twain. I like Twain. <laughs> Lionel Twain, who lives at 2 2 Twain. <laughs> Yes, exactly. It's twoo. With the tubular it's twa 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 <laughs> It's twoo. <laughs> yes. Well, twa twa. Okay, so today we're playing Citation Needed. I'm going to read through a story, and in this case, it's a story that's tangentially train related. Uh, submitted by a viewer of the channel, Sits. Thank you, Sits, for this one. This was a great story. Question. And, yes. If it's tangentially related, related is it about the valley line? <laughs> Line that man! Line that man! <laughs> All right then. You opened your mouth and I knew it was coming. <laughs> the topic for today's episode of Citation Needed is the Vanceboro Bridge Bombing, Germany's secret war on America. Okay. Uh -huh. Any any guesses right away? Any familiarity right away? Are Does it we involve spies? Point to Leighton. This is gonna be hard. Are we in? <laughs> no, you only get one point, despite the bell saying otherwise. Is this uh, beginning of World War Two? No. Is it World War One? Yes. <laughs> this is gonna. Be, oh, it's it's, it's run away play. from this, you. This may not work as a joke. Got it. Go. Okay. <laughs> no way, you're ringing it too hard. Yes, <laughs> this is not gonna work out. Okay. Very gentle. <clears throat> yeah. You bought in the bell, we already got enough dinglings here. Thank you. Almost got it. Thank you for so, being more almost. gently. Yes, World War I, Germans, uh, a secret war on America, yes. So, it also involves spies, as Leighton says. Spies. So, our, our protagonist, in the case of this story, is a man by the name of Werner Horn. He served in the German army for 10 years until he got inactivated, went down to Guatemala. Is it inactivated? That's, that is what the article says. I feel like there's a lot of ways to say that, and I feel like that is the, the worst, the, that is the, the least accurate way to How dare this. you internet sources say this? I inactivated. Got inactivated. Okay. Are you saying yes. that the internet can't words good? Well, yes, yeah, sometimes. Can I have cheeseburger? Break. So, he goes from Germany after he has <clears throat> left the military, or the military no longer needed him. Goes to Guatemala to work on and manage a Guatemalan coffee plantation. Fun stuff. As you do. Learns Spanish and English while he's down there. See, However, in August no. 1914, <clears throat> World War One is now a rage, and he gets a telegram saying, you need to come back and serve in the army because... I told him I was done. They keep dragging me back into it. <laughs> they yes. promised me all the sauerkraut I could eat. <laughs> yes, but in a German accent, yes. They so promised me all the sauerkraut I could eat. That was French. Oh yeah, you guys both went French. Oh god. I told them I was done. 
but I'm still doing French. I'm trying to do like you're, a big Kaiser. You're German. Guy. Yeah, we got. I told you, German. Was done, and they keep dragging me back in. It's kind Jeez. of. Yeah, yeah. It kind of, yeah, it's close. You sound like a Hogan's Heroes extra. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a lo- wow. You wound me, Jesus. You wounded me. I know I did. <laughs> that's the reply to that one. Yeah, if you didn't see earlier episodes in this season of this show, Leighton got clocked by Brett with a line, <laughs> and it was like a little red. Here. It was glorious. <laughs> It's hard for him to he maintain a stiff to upper lip. He's res off too. It's still has a <laughs> to do that before you go. Yes. <sighs> so he needs to get back to Germany. Okay. So he's in Guatemala presently. How does he try and get back to Germany? By train. Naturally. Yes. For at least parts of it. But I'll get you a point. There you go. I guess he can't get to Germany by train, but you know. Yeah, whatever yeah, floats your boat. Get him. Ah. <laughs> right for the face again. Both yeah. guys, just slightly off center. Straight on the nose. That would have been a strike where he bowling pins. <laughs> I know. Right? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, you only get the spare, though. Uh, hmm? We should go bowling. We should go bowling. Nikos! We should go bowling. We go bowling, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so, goes by train, yes. But where does he go to? New York. Mexico. Oh. Point to Brett. Yep. Straight to New York. So, uh, uh, yeah, yes, point to Brett. Okay, I'm just gonna have to get a sound file of that, yeah. and then we'll just paste it in. I think One so. second. Yes, he goes by train to New York, and he can do so because the United States was still neutral at this point in the war. They had no stance on what, uh, you know, they weren't supporting any side or another. They said that they were neutral. They were still beige. <laughs> they were still beige, it's yes. A beige alert. A beige alert. <laughs> Tell my wife hello. <laughs> However, what happens to him when he gets to New York? He gets mugged. No. <laughs> He, he's having a little trouble getting to Germany. So what does he do to try and fix that? He tries to stow away? Mm-mm. Goes he to goes the German embassy? Yes, points to Jimmy. Ah. He goes to the German a embassy. A logical thing to do. <laughs> I can't and, um, so at the German embassy is a man named Captain Franz von Bappen, who was a German diplomat at the time. Um, Welcome can you to can my you office? can you picture the most stereotypical World War One German and paint a picture for me? Because I have a picture. Do you have an eye patch? Fat mutton chops, pickle mm, hall, mm, no. helmet scar. With a spike. Point no. to Jimmy. Yeah, that's a pickle hall. Yeah, He's that's got, a pickle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, then points to both of you. He's got the pith helm. <laughs> It's just like, that's no. the most German looking dude I've that's ever no, seen. Pith Helm is Zulu. Is that's a pickle. Oh. Yeah, Pith well, Helm. The British like explore, you know, I say, tell you, sir. That's a Pith Helm. Wait, you have to the Africans. That's the spike, is the pickle helm. I have learned diff- new things about helmets yeah. of, of the early days. I'm surprised Pumps. you don't have a pickle helm. He's got a scary letter open. That you ha- <laughs> Do you have one and haven't shared it with the class? Not so true, though. <laughs> Not so far as can be proven in the court of law. So, <clears throat> what is my name? Franz von Papen. My, ich bin Franz von Papen. Ja, 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 ja. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah. Do we need a strudel? <laughs> <It's laughs> <It's laughs> Smoking a pancake, perhaps. <laughs> he's killing, better clip. He's killing. What was it? That's yeah. Pancakes. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh yeah, pancakes. Pancakes. Yeah, pancakes. We're talking about the boofer kissers here. Anyway. Kartoffel poofer. So, <clears throat> Captain Franz von Papen mm. gets a telegram. He is the guy at the embassy. He's the diplomat. He gets a telegram. What do you think the telegram from Germany is telling him to do? F- I'm gonna find out. Get use this. Find somebody. To do sabotage. Yeah, you were close, but yes, that's very on the nose, Brett. They called and, him and yes. as he receives his telegram, he's like, gee, or oh, sorry. Where am I going to find someone who I don't value their life, and yet I can trust their allegiance to Germany to grow up and blow up a train bridge? And then our friend walks in. <laughs> and Warner walks oh, in. Oh, hello, welcome. <laughs> can you go blow up some oh, yeah. You want to go to Germany, but first you have to do me a favor. I, you yeah. must go to New Jersey. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> you open the telegram, Beastie Boys starts playing, sabotage. <laughs> Insert that doesn't even just, no. Yeah. 
Okay. <clears throat> so the telegram says, The general staff is anxious that vigorous measures should be taken to destroy the Canadian Pacific in several places for the purposes of causing a lengthy disruption of traffic. Vigorous measures. Vigorous measures. Vigorous measures. Hey. Your hand did not shake enough, Mark. Would you like to try again on the vigorous? Vigorous. <laughs> you must blow up the bridges. <laughs> And the new <laughs> these Canadians that make me sorry. I am the I think we're turning a little bit French, Belgian, and slash Nixon. That's fine. Yeah, <laughs> they're all across the pond. We love you all. We're bad at these, uh, bad at all these accents. So, the Vanceboro Bridge. With the arrival of Warner, our protagonist, okay. Von Papen had a willing operative. He also had the target being the Vanceboro Bridge. Where is the Vanceboro Bridge? I asked the questions. Canada. Moose. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but Maple where? Syrup. More specifically, connect Eastern to Ontario. Canada. I don't know Canadian. Can Canada. That's why I said Eastern Canada. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yes, it's Canada, but where does it connect in the States? It's a bridge across between Oh, oh is it the one connecting um, Niagara Falls. Uh, to Detroit? No. Niagara Falls. Slowly no. I turn. Quick. <laughs> Jimmy? Michigan. No. no, very, very far east. Maine. You guys are in stereo, so I'm giving you both points. <laughs> yes, it's a bridge between Canada and Maine. The Vanceboro Bridge. Oh, the bridge. bridge between Canada and Maine. <laughs> Sounds like the Maine line. So it. <clears throat> yes, thank you. Restore it and run it on the Maine Maine line. Yes. The Maine line. Oh Maine, God. I Maine just line? looked out. <laughs> Still so many lines underneath the table. <laughs> Good goodness. Mr. Limes here for the great lime fight. <laughs> Bring out your limes! <laughs> so it runs from Maine to the port of St. John, which was a huge destination and shipping area for In the Canadian, Finland, the Canadians. And so the, the Germans had taken issue with the operation of trains over this bridge. And why? Because they are making bullets for the British people, and we are shooting at the British people currently. We would like them to not be shooting at us. Anyone else? Oh, it's allowing for American goods and commerce to go to their enemy. Yes, that's more direct because it wasn't necessarily the Brits. The Canadians were actually fighting in the war at the time. Well, they, the were, they, they were more. Uh, so, were point more to like, Leighton, yes. We're just down here like, well, we're neutral. We'll, we'll show neutral, you all the but guns you want. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So, so anybody. they're letting troops and they're, guns and everything run across this railroad bridge from the States to Canada, mm -hmm. and the Germans are pissed because they're complaining, yeah, like, literally, this is violating the international neutrality law. The States is being the U.S. and just saying, well, what do you think about it? Huh? Well, we sold yeah. stuff to the what Germans, too, before the war. Well, it's before fine. the war. Or, sorry, before we entered the war. Well, Swiss neutral, brown bovary supplied traction motors and stuff for U-boats. Mm. Yeah, it's fine. fine. So, the bridge, though, while the Germans knew about it and thought it was important, what did the Americans and the Canadians think about it? It's just a bridge, buddy. Yes, was it due for demolition or something? No, they didn't give a crap. They didn't guard it. They didn't have people watching oh, it. It wasn't yeah. a strate of strategic importance to them. Mm -hmm. They figured they just crossed that bridge and they got there. Yes. Uh, kill him. Limes. Limes. Whitey. <clears throat> Whitey. So, von Papen Hello. gets <laughs> Hello. gets Werner Horn to agree to blowing up the bridge on one condition. What's the condition? He will be sent with good passage back to Germany upon completion of his mission? That would make more sense than this. No. He doesn't have to go back to Germany if he doesn't. <laughs> um, he doesn't have to wear later hosen? <laughs> dance, monkey, dance! <laughs> no. On the condition that no one is hurt. Blow oh, up the bridge. Okay. So just just ruin the infra infrastructure. Okay. Okay. Don't kill people. Don't I, I like, I okay. like... So it's, it's actually kind okay. of yeah, really fair. Like, yeah, yeah. Don't kill anybody. So <clears throat> he sends Horn to the tiny town in Maine of Vanceboro, and he sends him with a bit of kit. What do you think are some items in his kit? A bomb. <laughs> Screw <laughs> A suitcase full of explosives. That yes. counts. <laughs> that does count as a bomb, so I'll give you the point. Uh, uranium bomb! Yes, <laughs> yes, like that. For uranium! Yes. Uh, he sends him with many more things, though. What else would he have other than a suitcase full of dynamite? Stopwatch. Uh, not, it doesn't say, but presumably. Uh, disguises. No. Fuses. No. Well, presumably, but... 
Okay. And I, I'm gonna get, actually I'm gonna give Leighton a retroactive point for disguises because yes, kind of. So they. Oh, is it Canadian Army uniforms? No, no. So they send him to Maine with a schedule for the trains. Okay. A 38 caliber revolver, money, small German flags. And a suitcase full of explosives. The small German flags so you yeah. could plant on the wreckage movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 bridge, you very welcome. Yeah. 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 Horn arrives to Grand Central Station, March 31st of the year, and he buys a first class train ticket on the New York New Haven. Look, the New Haven. Sorry, Jersey, I just made you mad. Anyways, so for the mission, Pappen sent him dressed up in working man's clothes. So where is the issue here? He He's bought a first-class first class class ticket. First class. He's in first-class ticket, yes. So, in first class, on the train with all of the <laughs> mining consortium people, <laughs> mining is a man in work boots, torn pants, big overcoat, wool cap, and he's 6'2", Aryan-looking German dude. And and he's got a heavy, heavy not German accent. Not very conspicuous. No, not not at all. Uh, not at all. He so, will disappear. So people are in their finest mid-Atlantic mid accents going, he might be a spy. I, <laughs> They're just going, oh. I don't, you know, I don't trust this character. My he might be up to something wicked. Yes. My Reginald, look at the riffraff they allow in here. <laughs> I say this railroad is going downhill. <laughs> yeah, that's what I say. Well, so, he says that every day. <sighs> Who gets the line for that? Because he says it, but he said it then. Do we just get them both at the same time? Hey, yes. Yes, go. <laughs> oh, you we got him right in the hat. Oh, there you go. Not me yet. <laughs> Miss me yet. Not me yet. <laughs> not in my not in my hat, please. So he ultimately makes it to Vanceboro, despite people being like, "What? What is this guy? Is this guy okay. here?" So, so he will rides... help with the police reports later. Yes. Okay. Traveling down the railroad, finally at 6:40 p.m., he arrives in Vanceboro. And this is an itty bitty little kind of rural town in Maine. At you the ain't time. from around these parts, is you? He arrives to the, the little town, and everyone's wondering, okay, what's this? And uh, being the German man he is, and, and being worried about his mission, um, he chooses to hide his suitcase to make sure that people can't stumble upon it. Where does he hide it? In an alley. Before we do this. I feel as though if you carried the suitcase, people would be less likely to stumble upon it. That seems very reasonable, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Did he hide it in the water tower? Like, no. Uh, the front this is rapidly tower. feeling like a bumbling villain in a Clive Cussler novel. Yeah, yes. Uh, I'm going to give Jimmy the preemptive point, or the, uh, the post Hughes point, rather. He didn't hide it necessarily in an alley, but in an alley it was a pile of wood that he just tucked kind. it in and put the wood back. What kind of wood was it? It's uh, presumably firewood. Well, However, <laughs> it could have been two, of, two of the townsfolk watched him do that and then watched him walk to the bridge. Like, okay. strange these, German sounding these, looking guy. He's hidden a briefcase in Joe's pile of wood. Yes, and, and then wandered over to a railroad bridge. Big, I'm imagining it's a big f off bridge. Pretty big, yes. Yeah, at least a sizable f off bridge. Yes, yes. yes. So they also noticed one other thing, other than him hiding the suitcase and going over to the bridge. Something very notable about his appearance that they noticed. Any guesses? It's winter in Maine. He's... Oh, he wasn't wearing winter clothes. Points to Leighton, yes. He's very underdressed for the weather. He was dressed for Guatemala, not for uh, up north there, eh, bud? One of the folks who saw him ultimately goes to the local immigration officer, the inspector named Car Horn. <laughs> C A R R H O R N. That sounds like me, in a D&D campaign where the What's player's like, yeah, ask some random character that you have no idea. Uh, Car Horn? Villager, what is your name? Car Horn, yes. <laughs> Sorry, my name is. Uh, I was yeah, gonna no. say that you took my joke. What did Carhorn say about this? Uh, yeah. Did he have a cousin named Carhart? Me, me. <laughs> The <laughs> yes. So the man and Inspector Horn go back to the bridge, and they find Werner walking the bridge and inspecting it. Right. So they confront him, and Werner then says he's a Dutch farmer looking to buy land. <laughs> cover story. You Good have cover, said bro. Anything. So the inspector suggests rather easily you should probably go to the local hotel and figure things out from there. <laughs> 
unwittingly helping the spy by giving him some advice. Yes. And then the inspector and several townspeople watched him retrieve his heavy suitcase from the woodpile. Okay, strange Dutch farmer looking for land and With also... a suitcase full of money. I am from Holland, <laughs> isn't that the end? Yeah. Look at this, it's very strange. So, he ends up checking into the hotel, spent the next day in his room. The whole day. What's he doing? <laughs> I don't want to answer that one. <laughs> Other than breaking Leighton, what's he doing? <laughs> Think of the things he's been sent with. Plotting. <laughs> Planting little German flags all over. I claim this hotel room in the name of Germany. <laughs> he just got little like he, he plants the flags. Like, <laughs> no. So <clears throat> he got sent with a railroad timetable. So he's studying the timetable. To make sure that he's got it. Are all the trains f***ing late? Points to break. <laughs> What's the point of studying the timetable when it's the railroad and they don't even keep to the timetable? No. You know, not in that era, at least. Not actually in that era. They probably would have better kept to the timetable because it was timetable and today, train orders. But uh, yeah. well, at least key points. But there were very much a, this okay. Is so the middle of nowhere bridge. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. So he was really worried as he's studying about the actual way that he needed to blow up the bridge. What was he really worried about? Did hurting he have enough people. explosives? Hurting people. Hurting people? Eh, no, not what I'm looking for, but probably yes. Did he have enough explosives? He probably thought about that. But no, this is very much more political. Which side of the bridge to blow up? Yes. <laughs> Point to Brett. He's very worried because if he got caught blowing up the Vanceboro Bridge on the American side, he would be faced with criminal charges. If he got caught blowing it up on the Canadian side while disguised as a Dutch farmer, then he could be hanged for espionage. Ah, okay. So, Sounds so, like he should have bought the uniform. So yes. Change into that and go, yes, I'm a good So what does he do to try and mitigate this? Flips a coin. Goes home. Gets a map to see where the border is? No. He uses the German flags that were given to him and marks himself as a German. So he's got on both arms of his coat, he puts the little flags. <laughs> and he does this, he does this, this because- This man was in the military? A, a while ago, yes. <laughs> He's just a citizen, like, you don't know what a position, we don't know what position he had previously. He's just a dude. He's, yeah. he's a dude, he's not necessarily- he's shoveling horse for the cavalry, He's I not guess. 007, this yeah. This is not very intelligent. He, yes. He was captain of the pots and pans, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Von Papen, the guy that got him to do this whole thing anyways, told him that a flag would prove that he wasn't a spy. So that he can go blow up the bridge on the Canadian side, but as an act of war with the flags. So he's not a spy, he is a military person attacking I mean, I guess it doesn't Canada. identify him, but he's not in proper uniform, but. Yes, but also then can't he be hanged as SP, or is he gonna POW? <laughs> doesn't end well either. I can see why he spent all day in his hotel room. This is confusing me. Yes. Probably going, think what did I get my Scheiße, scheiße. What did I took I a stage in Guatemala. <laughs> I could be having coffee right now, but instead I am here. Yeah. In Maine. In so, Maine. In Vinta. In Vinta. In, in shorts. So he checks out of the hotel and he tells the proprietor, a man named Aubrey Tague, that he planned to take the 8 p.m. train to Boston. What does he do after telling the hotel proprietor his plans? Asks about northbound trains. <laughs> that would be about on par, but no. What time does it get here? Mm -mm. No. <laughs> what time's the eight o'clock train? When is the next train to Canada? So he goes to the station. Okay. And he's totally still underdressed. It's like below freezing by far. So he's freezing his ass off going to the station. <clears throat> waits for the train to leave. And then he hides to make it look as if he was on the train. Okay. In case anyone in the, the nosy town was watching. Okay. Were they, was nobody in the nosy town watching him as he hid? Apparently not. Okay. <laughs> so he hides until 11.30. Yeah, out in the cold. Oh, hops that's... on the train that's supposed to be running from uh, towards St. John. So he had studied his timetable 
And once he gets to the bridge, he figured that he should have about an hour until the next train comes through. And so that way he could blow up the bridge without hurting anybody. And then he would have time to escape as well. And so, yes. How do, about that escape? Yes. Are we there yet? But, uh... <laughs> what about it? Do, have we thought about that yet? Are we going to wait to think about that? He was planning to walk to the next town. To 30 in Canada? miles in the woods in Maine. In winter. Wait. In winter. On the Newfoundland side. I was going to say, so he's starting in the U.S. side. Yes. If he blows up the bridge on the American side. Yes. Well, Canadian side, but as an act of war. Yes. So he's walking to the next town in Canada. No. He's oh, going to walk walks to the Canadian back. side, set the explosives, and go back. So he's going back to the town to the Yes. Came. He's going okay. back towards the way he came. Okay. Uh, long fuse. So he can set the explosives, let okay. it go, do the thing. If you light it in America, does <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When did you light the fuse? He's starting to case the bridge, figure out where to load the explosives. What happens? He gets Train caught. Comes. He gets caught. Points to Leighton. Two railroad workers spotted him and asked what he was doing there. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking at our bridge? I'm seeing things. Or so freezing. Why are you out here? Why is there a guy covered in German flags and shorts on the? <laughs> Huh? So, <laughs> how did they? Wh how did he respond to the railroad workers that come to him? Not I'm, well. I'm, I'm a bridge inspector. <laughs> no, but ri the right idea. I, I might give it to Jimmy for not well. <laughs> did he fall back on the Dutch farmer bet? No. So we're gonna give the point to Jimmy. Did he just say, "I'm a spy"? Surprise! I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna give a point to Brett. He didn't <laughs> say he didn't say he was a spy. He just said he was an officer. Didn't say of where or of an what officer. or whatever. I'm an, I'm an officer. Okay. <laughs> that is a very German attitude. Of, I'm an officer. And what the, are you doing? And the the you know track inspectors. Okay. <laughs> so what do yes, they do? Sam? What do the track inspectors do? How do they respond? Leave. They go back to town. He said it first. Leave. <laughs> yes. No. They just figured he was guarding the bridge and just left him. Okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. You're whatever, an man. Whatever, man. I don't I'm get paid enough for this crap. <laughs> So, the Montreal to St. John train passes, and he's figuring he's got an hour before the next train. Steps out onto the bridge with the suitcase, doesn't get far, but hears another train whistle. A following section. Following section something. So he runs off, waits for the train to pass, and he's been unnerved by the fact that the rail yard workers have found him, trains aren't running to schedule, he's suffering in the cold, has no idea when the next train's gonna come. So he goes across the bridge, Sets himself on the Canadian side and decides it's time. So he places the explosives, and what does he do rather than use the 50 second or 50 minute fuses that he had? Shoot it. He uses no. a short fuse. Yes. Oh, no. He cuts the fuses. Oh, no. Point to Jimmy. Does he blow he's, himself he's... up? Is this how the story ends? <laughs> no, he does not blow himself up. <laughs> He cuts it, it down make to for a quicker escape. <laughs> cuts his, cuts it down to about a three minute fuse because he's worried about blowing up trains. He just wants to blow up the bridge. Yeah. Okay. So he lights the fuse, runs back to America. Explosion goes off. It okay. wakes up the residents of Vanceboro and Saint Croix on the Canadian side, presumably. Saint Croix. Saint Croix. Saint -Croix. <laughs> Uh, it broke windows on both sides of the river. Like, Jesus. big, big honking explosion. This is a large briefcase. It is a large briefcase. And they said it was heavy. That being the case. Line that man. I'm just gonna just... take a moment to show that off to the camera. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> Star Trek special effects. Yeah, lean. <laughs> yeah. The Romulans. You ever seen how uh, Lieutenant Riker sits in chairs? <laughs> like, to demonstrate for the class. It's Those called the Riker bad. Maneuver. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that just the van down by the <laughs> river? No, okay. it's Riker does it. Okay. <laughs> sure. He probably wants to stoink the chair. Hey, man. So, explosion goes off. Wakes the hotel owner, Aubrey. Yeah. And he hears water running right away in the hotel and he goes, okay. So he opens the door and he finds Werner Horn shivering over a sink running hot water over his frozen hands. Well, 
Conspicuous? A little conspicuous. So Tag told him to put some snow on them to let them warm up slower than that. Yes. Put it inside. Because they were that cold. Thank you. <laughs> and then he told him that he could sleep in one of the rooms in the attic because he had already checked out. Hey, we'll take you in for the night. Are we just ignoring the explosion and that fact that this man was supposed to be gone a while ago? Apparently for now. Okay. Well, he's a popsicle. Speaking so. of ignoring the explosion, the sound of the bomb also woke Deputy Sheriff George Ross. What did Deputy Sheriff George Ross think? Went back to bed. What in the wide, wide world of sports point, is going point on? Point to Brett. He goes back to bed because he thought that a locomotive boiler had exploded or a train had crashed, neither of which concerned him. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes back to sleep. 1-800-NOT-MY-PROBLEM. Problem. So, it turns out the explosion didn't really do much damage to the bridge and only delayed trains while they inspected it and found nice. that there was nothing structurally wrong, okay. so trains kept running. So at 5.30 the next morning, three railroad policemen knock on Deputy Sheriff Ross's door. Was one of them Alice the Goon? <laughs> Alice the Goon. Perhaps. <laughs> the one of the Pinkerton. Yeah, yes. Hey. <laughs> And it turns out that the hotel owner, Tag, had spoken to the railroad workers the night before about the stranger, and so they started putting two and two together. Right. So everyone goes over, talks to him, and he just goes, German, upstairs. <laughs> and so they go. They and just, they... I like to think that they didn't even talk. Just four policemen barge in the door with a couple of railroad guys. They didn't even look up from the just, ledger. He was uh, like, he's German he's up there. upstairs. Crowd, get him. Yep. Mm -hmm. Crowd, get him. Yep. <laughs> Fuck him, boys. <laughs> I found him in the room, took him into custody. He answered their questions honestly, like a good crowd. Uh, and he explained later to a U.S. intelligence agent, I really did it for my country. I did not want to kill anyone. We only wanted to stop the traffic and super supplies over that bridge. I would have done a better job but for the cold. Oh, I'm getting British in myself. I froze my fingers and my face and my ears. I froze my fingers. And I thought I, I would freeze to death before I made all my arrangements. How, how German. Before yeah. I made all the arrangements. Before I could make the necessary arrangements. Yeah. yeah! Yeah! So, he points out the fact that he had planted the dynamite in Canada, okay. in the enemy territory, since Canada was war with Germany. Is this all this thinking that he's done? Is it about to backfire on him? Point to Brett. Uh-oh. <laughs> ruh, -ruh. So that meant that he had committed an act of war and the U.S. could not extradite him because they had be declared to be neutral. So the right. U.S. should not be able to ship him off. Right. The Brit Canadians and the Brits wanted him to, but America was neutral and Horn argued that he couldn't be extradited for committing the act of war. Sheriff Ross was at a loss. He didn't know what to do. Everyone was mad at this German guy for trying to blow up the bridge. Right. They were worried a mob would gather to try and lynch him, all this sort of fun stuff. And so uh, people start talking and they, and they figure out what to do with them. What do you think the states figures out what to do? Throw them off the bridge. Mm -mm. Uh, drag, throw them on the next train to Canada and say good luck. Mm -mm. <laughs> no. Something very, very judicial, very US judicial of, of us. Nothing. Charge them for vagrancy? <laughs> Release them on bond? Getting close to the right <laughs> answer with Jimmy, I might give you a Unlicensed point for that. Unlicensed dynamite? Yes. Yeah. He was illegally transporting explosives on the train. Okay. Ah. Yes. So they get, they talked with the feds basically, figured things out, realized, okay, we, we don't want to keep this guy here in case a lynch mob. So they ship him off to the feds, uh, originally with a charge for blowing the windows out of the town of Vanceboro. <laughs> Vandalism. That was, the, that was the first thing. That's how Kay. they held him initially. Okay. But then they realized, okay, well, he's holding explosives you and transporting explosives on the train. You were in presumably a very nice parlor car with a rather large suitcase full, full of, of dynamite. Boom. Yes. Yeah. He had an explodey boy suitcase. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, March 2nd, 1915, he was charged with three counts of the conveyance of explosives on passenger trains. Sentenced to 18 months. Three counts. Three counts. Three different trains. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Yes. Hit him. And you too, you did it. <laughs> I did it too. That was cool. <laughs> I came around and I felt it hit my hair on the back it, side. It hit the, the oh, curved the back, back of the chair. The chair and I felt it go poof and I was like, Mama. what? Mama. Very strange. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Sentenced to 18 months in prison, sent to the federal pen in Atlanta. 
Ugh. Von Pappen, the guy at Von the embassy, Pappen Von Pappen out through three hundred yards. <laughs> <laughs> he later admits that it had not been his shining hour. <laughs> not a particularly intelligent piece of work on my part. I, it was not great. <laughs> and it, uh, yeah, that chapter in his memoirs. Well, I don't want to talk about this. The time I, I didn't to... blow up a bridge. The time I did not blow up the bridge. I had I had on Sky to do this, but he did not do a very good job. Mm. It's not good. Admittedly, plan was not the best move. So here's my question: You have no. a, you have a briefcase full of dynamite, yes. large enough to blow out windows in two towns, presumably located. I'm guessing it was more of like a large suitcase, not a. Yeah, okay, but a large suitcase full of dynamite. How did he not damage the bridge? It probably didn't put it in a structural member place, and it just made a big pressure wave and didn't actually I impact guess, anybody. Yeah. Put it on top. It didn't have any force. Oh, okay, I was, I was assuming he at least like up. slung it down into the superstructure. Or something. Yeah, okay. not not a demolition expert other than Derail Valley, but um, you need to have a shape charge or yes. something. I thought actually, you were a demo yeah. man in Team Fortress Rather too. than just what makes me a good demo man. <laughs> yeah, rather than just noise. Yeah, how do yeah. you make thing go boom and break rather than just make a big poof? Also, keep in mind, single pane windows at this time, so a also lot true. easier yeah. to make them go yeah. Blowing yeah. the windows out is kind of a regular occurrence. The horse farts on the other side of town and everybody loses. <laughs> and then the windows Yeah, the windows yeah. weren't all there cracked Different up to story. me back then. <laughs> Lime this man. <laughs> These limes are these are getting a little they're, skanky. They're, 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 they're kind of exploding on the impact problem is, now. There's like a layer under here of That's like fry, fine pristine. I brought eight limes this time. I know because I, I knew I we cut would need them it. with the box cutter. <laughs> yeah, yes, show show the class what you cut them with. Well, I tried to cut them with the machete. Oh, the machete was too dull. The machete looked like a Gallagher act. <laughs> it kind of exploded the limes. <laughs> 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 Oh, beautiful. So he gets out of prison. What happens to him after he gets out of prison? Mysterious. Arrested as a prisoner of war. Because by that time, the U.S. has entered the war. Point to Leighton Moreland. Yes. He expected well, to go God. home after he gets out of prison. Instead, he got extradited to Canada, where he spent 10 years in a Dorchester prison. Oof. Ooh, 10 years in Canadian prison. How did they he come out of prison? How, how did he come out of prison? Poorly. Fatter. Like makeable syrup? <laughs> We will put a point down for Brett's Poorly because it's the first one of the yes. series and it's the final episode of the season. Yes. Upon his final release, the doctors certified him as clinically insane. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> Poor dude. Well, the Vanceboro Bridge I has swear since... I'm not crazy. I took the dynamite and put it on the syrupy side of things, but my fingers <laughs> were too chilly to set the fuses correctly, so I went and washed them in the snow. Oh, yeah. 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 All right. The Vanceboro Bridge has since been replaced. It's replaced. That bridge is gone, but he did not blow it up on that day. Just imagine he's sitting in a cold Canadian prison for 10 years thinking, I left Guatemala for this. I left Guatemala, I left Guatemala for this. There's no Kaiser anymore. I'm just sitting here in the f***ing cold, and I left Guatemala for this. Yeah, the Guatemalan coffee plant. Seems like that would be a, a really nice Much arrangement move. compared to trying to blow up a bridge for country. Yeah. Particularly yeah. when you're Scooby-Doo. Uh, scooby -Doo particularly it. when you are not very good at blowing. Yes. And I would have... Oh, I would have got away with it too if it wasn't for your meddling f***ing Canadians! But I would make a fist, but my hands frozen, so this is the best I could do. Ah! <laughs> Come on! I am frozen and I cannot display! So, at the end of the episode, Brett wins, hands down, with a five-point lead. Woo! Very well done, Brett. Very well done, very well. And, uh, that's that. That's Woo. the end of the season of season two. Three-quarter of these, or three-quarter of these people are lying? Sure. No. Three-quarter of these people are idiots. Yes. Wait, no. Case in point. No, all of, of us are idiots. Yes. All of no. us are idiots. No. We're collectively three-quarters of one idiot searching for a fourth. That Have we one. found yes. another you idiot? Yes, the line. Have we found another idiot? Jimmy makes a solid idiot. You make a solid uh, yes. idiot. <laughs> These are a hell of a lot of fun to film. We get to have a lot of fun together. So please let us know in the comments down below if you thought it was fun, if you've got ideas for citation needed. Send more know, stories. So send them our way, send them my way, and make sure it's not public so they can't see it, because I've seen him trying to get information out for me on Discord. Mm. <laughs> and that's the end of the video. That's the end of the video. Bye! Bye.